Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Door to Study. So here I am with a new chapter that is Reduce, Reuse and Recycle Waste. This is the last chapter of our geography book. The last four chapters that are related to waste. From those four chapters, one extract will come that is 10 marks question. Okay, so here we can see there are three R's in the name of the chapter itself. That are Reduce, R, reuse R and recycle R. So we have to reduce, reuse and recycle waste because the amount of waste that is accumulated on the earth's surface is increasing day by day. So we are trying and find out new methods to tackle with these waste. Okay, so without wasting time, let's go into the chapter. First, we will discuss about reducing the waste. How we can reduce the amount of waste that is generated? So, waste is mainly, mainly generated in industrial areas. That is in industries. So, let's start with that itself. Okay. So, the first one is change of process. Now, what does it mean? We have to change the process in many industries that is being used to manufacture many products. One example that's given in the book itself is that in zinc electroplating, you must have learned about electroplating in science, okay. So in zinc electroplating industries, instead of using sulfate salt, if we use chloride, chloride, then it will help to eliminate cyanide, okay, cyanide formation. So in zinc electroplating, if we use chloride, instead of sulfate salt, then it will help to eliminate cyanide. So it's an example how we can change the process, change the elements used in the process to reduce the amount of waste generated or to reduce the hazardous waste that is produced. Okay. Now the second one is waste concentration. That is we can try to lower the waste concentration that is being produced by an industry while uh, while manufacturing its products. Okay. So, for liquid wastes, we can adopt precipitation and evaporation. For dealing with liquid waste, we can adopt precipitation and evaporation. Why? What about then what should we do with the solid wastes or the wastes which are inflammable? Okay, that is, which can be burnt, that which can catch fire. Such um, such inflammable waste can be handled with incineration. Now, what is incineration? Incineration in simple language, in simple terms, just means burning. But what's the advantage is that, I mean, so there are many advantages of incineration. That is, it reduces the solid waste 95% by mass. And the ash that is left after incineration is being used in cement industry or some other industries like that for production of cement, bricks, etc. So, what you can say? Uh, the waste that is generated from incineration is also utilized for some purposes. Okay. And furthermore, the medical wastes, that is the, the waste that have chances or the waste that can cause... Um, you can say communicable diseases if just thrown open in the rivers or in if just thrown open in the landfills. So that waste can be tackled with incineration. How? In high temperatures, these wastes are burnt. These wastes are burnt in high temperature. So at such high temperatures, the pathogens die. Okay. So it was all about waste concentration. Now the last one is segregation of waste. Segregation means to separate. It's obvious that in an industry or in any in any place, if something is manufactured, then waste will be produced. But there would be various kinds of waste. So we can separate them and we can, uh, well if we we'll separate them, then we can uh, find out new new methods or we can find out particular methods for some particular type of waste such as 
uh, if we separate biodegradable waste from non biodegradable waste then biodegradable waste can be dumped in earth surface it will not cause any environmental hazards but this but if we dump both biodegradable and non biodegradable waste together then the non biodegradable waste will affect the environment will affect soil will pollute soil okay so that is we can separate the hazardous waste and non hazardous waste this hazardous waste can be treated uh, with some specific scientific methods that are being uh, what you can say that any that are being find out found out for treating these wastes and the non hazardous waste can be disposed in traditional manner okay so this was about reducing the waste now we will move forward and learn about reusing waste so pause the video and note it down now the second r stands for reuse which means the things that we consider as waste can be reused as some useful things okay for example the shoes some shoes that we wear are made from old tires lamps are made from tin cans that are considered as useless water bags are made from leather so there are many examples many such examples that will tell us that the things that we consider as waste can be reused and can be put into use okay now uh, these are some uh, ordinary examples apart from that there is a very big example of reusing things that is you must have heard about neek chan neek what he did is that he made a rock garden and in that gar garden he made different sculptures or you can say it as statues but not made from stones they were made from bottles tins that is all the materials that are considered are as waste and are thrown away and are thrown at some corner of the roads and places okay so he utilized those things and made a beautiful rock garden he made a beautiful rock garden in chandigarh okay and that garden although he made, although he utilized all those plastic bottles tins bangles or whatever things that are considered as useless it looks very beautiful there is a significant point about that okay so uh, this is one it's a great significant example of reusing the waste one more things you all might you all have seen in india is that there are rag pickers rag pickers who they are they are people who move from place to place and they just segregate wastes from a heap of waste they will pick out the things like uh, bottles plastic bottles tins or piece of crockery like those things they will separate out and uh, some uh, things made from tin iron steel they will separate out all those things and they also in a uh, if um, they also move in the colonies and from door to door and collect such wastes and these wastes are, are then sold to people that is to artisans who make use of these things and earn their living okay so by these things by the by this activity many persons are uh, what you can say they are uh, getting benefits first the artisans earn their living by making products of these wastes wastes second the rag pickers also earn their living by selling these wastes to the artisans and the third that the burden of waste disposal becomes less as the valuable wastes are already segregated by the rag pickers okay so rag pickers also play an important role in reusing wastes in india okay 
uh, I think once in board exam this question has come. Okay, that is the role of rag pickers in reusing the waste or something like that had come. So remember this point. Now we will learn about. Now we will discuss about recycling the waste. Now the third R stands for recycle. That is recycling waste. Some waste have to be recycled so that we can utilize it effectively. A very important uh, recycling product that is seen in India is daggers. This is specially seen during the sugar sugar cane harvesting season. That is now you will think what is daggers? Daggers is formed. Once the sugar cane is crushed, that is after the crushing of sugar cane, the materials that are left over is known as baggers. Now these baggers are used in the paper making industry. They are crushed and uh, the pulp, the pulp that is used for making paper, that is this baggers is mixed with the pulp that is used in making paper. Okay, so along with other things. Baggers is also crushed and mixed with that slurry that is used for making paper. Now, in the paper industry itself, old papers, newspapers, torn papers, etc., are used to make newspapers. Now, such activities, what do they do? They are environmental friendly. They are environment friendly because they decreases the number of trees that are cut down to make paper. Okay. So it was about recycling waste. Now let's move on to the next stop. Now we are going to discuss about the initiatives that should be taken by the government or that are taken by the government, society and individuals. Okay. See, although we know about reducing, reusing and recycling, but until, but until they are put forth or until they are uh, applied. They will have no effect. So, people, to people, government, and society should understand what are these things. Should try to implement them. Okay. So that is about initiatives. If we talk about government initiatives, then government is taking big plans and government is taking big steps and setting up big plans to reduce the amount of waste generated. They are taking care of the uh, pollution. That is caused in rivers. That is they are trying to reduce the pollution level in rivers. They are constructing dams and uh, organizing major events like planting trees etc and etc. And now we come about come to society. Because the people in the society suffer from all these hazards or harmful effects of waste. So if they stand together then also many changes can be caused. Uh, uh, then also many changes can be seen. Okay. So, if some area is just covered with pollution, then they can form a group and concern the and concern the authority that is responsible for that area. In this way, they can get rid of the wastes and they can organize uh, they can organize various meetings in which they can spread awareness about how to reduce waste. Or how to reuse and recycle waste. Okay. Apart from that, they can also form groups and plant trees in various barren lands. That is, they can start um, plantation of trees which will, which will have a good impact on the environment as well as on them. Because they are going to get the fruitfulness from those trees. Okay. Now, what else they can do? Hmm. They can also, <clears throat> what you can say, they can also take initiative to clean some area by themselves instead of depending on the government for all the things. Now, after the society comes the individual. How each individual person can contribute to reduce the waste, can contribute to reduce the pollution because each individual makes the society. Sorry, because many individuals make the society. Okay. So, first and the most important thing that everyone has to do is of course planting trees. 
then there are many steps like reducing the use of cfc isn't it that is in way we can find cfcs in aerosol sprays that we use to get fragrance then the cfc refrigerators etc should be reduced and we should carry paper bags or jute and cloth bags instead of the plastic bags and we should adopt carpool or we can say that we should use public transportation so it will reduce the pollution that is caused by these vehicles okay so there are several several steps and we can travel short distances by foot or by using a cycle instead of taking out a motorbike okay apart from that there are many things instead of throwing the waste in open areas we can deposit it in a dustbin and then um uh, and then we can do the necessary steps that can be taken to dispose the waste okay so there are various methods there are various initiatives that can be taken by government society and individuals to reduce the amount of waste that is generated and that is increasing day by day so here we come to the end of this chapter that is reduce reuse and recycle waste so never forget to read the book once again thank you and in my next upcoming videos i would be discussing some important points or uh, most of the students get confused in uh, what you can say in pointing out the rivers in maps so i will be i will be coming with those videos okay bye